Hello, Higher Algebra students. Back here with Lesson 3 of Unit 10, which is a, a follow-up on degree of the polynomial along with leading coefficient and how those together lead to end behavior. Uh, let's jump right in here. So again, standard form. Sorry, I don't know how that got moved there. Um, standard form, again, uh, just as a reminder, is where we take a polynomial like this and we rearrange so that we see that highest order or highest degree uh, term first. And so the 6x to the 8th would go first there, followed by a positive 7x squared, and then subtracting the 5x and adding the 8 at the end. So um, this will be a little cleaner for us because we're going to really look at that leading coefficient um, and for that degree of the polynomial and to have it first just uh, rather than having to find it within is is uh, makes it a little easier. Um, so. The top one, this one, of course, wasn't in standard form yet, and we converted it there. Uh, the second one is in standard form outside of the fact that you see there's two of these x squared terms. So actually what we should be doing is combining those x squared terms so that we have a minus 7x squared and then minus 5x plus 8 there. So again, standard form, get that highest uh, degree out front. So... Why standard form? And I've touched on that a little bit, but once it's simplified, we can more easily find that the number of terms. So again, that's where we combined the x squared terms there. So we know exactly how many different uh, exponents there are um, throughout the polynomial. We can see the degree. We can see that leading term. So for instance, the leading term on this first one here would be 4x. Uh, the degree would be 1 because it's 4x to the first. And then the leading coefficient then is that 4, which is the value out in front of the x term. Uh, looking at the second one there, you can see the, the leading term is the x squared term. So that's a negative 3x squared, which means it's a second degree with a leading coefficient of negative 3. And then here, again, this one's in standard form as well. The leading term there is 2x to the fourth, so its degree is 4, and its leading coefficient is 2. Okay, um, so identifying the leading term here, so again, we see 3x to the third there is our leading term because the other uh, exponent is 1. On the second one here, we see an x to the x squared and then an x to the fifth. So our leading term here is actually negative 2x to the fifth. So you just have to... to uh, Remember that that was a, a minus 2x to the fifth there, so that's part of the term. So it's negative 2x to the fifth would be the leading term. And now this third one, you can see that we've got a little work to do on this one here, uh, where we're first going to uh, combine the x cubed terms to be 12x cubed, since it's 9 and 3, and then we add the 5. So we'll put the 5 at the end instead of at the beginning. So our leading term is now 12x to the third. Again, it wouldn't be 9x, wouldn't be 3x. Those are both x cubed terms, so they do combined. Now, if we wanted to explore why we care so much about this leading term before getting into exactly what it means, we could certainly go into Desmos and just start exploring here with some of these um, leading terms with even and odd exponents, positive, negative coefficients, and so forth. But we'll pass on that for right now and just move into... Um, what we see here in these respective groups. So you can see group one. In group one, when, when we look at where these graphs end up, okay, um, the left side of the graph ends up going up, the right side of the graph ends up going up, left side up, right side up, left side up, right side up, and, and uh, in all of those. And, we, and that really is a result of the leading term. And what happens here is the leading term has two specific characteristics that stand out. One, is that the degree is even, okay? So that's one big, big piece here. The other thing is the leading uh, coefficient, one, two, and one here, those are all positive. So those two factors combined lead to the idea that if we have a uh, graph of this polynomial, it will be going up at both ends, and that's called end behavior. And that's what we see here when we have an even degree and a positive coefficient. So again, this is degree and leading coefficient. Okay, so if we look at the second one here, um, here again, we have an even degree on all, of on all of these, but we have a negative 
leading coefficient, negative two, negative one, negative two. And what that does, as you can see, is that causes the end behavior to be negative. And the reason is any value we put in for x, whether it's negative 1,000 or positive 1,000, um, when you have an even exponent, it's going to make that value positive. But that positive value, when you multiply it by a negative leading coefficient, it's going to make all those positives just turn upside down and go negative. So you can see on the first one, again, positive exponents meant the result was always positive when we put a value in for x there. But, and then we multiplied it by a positive coefficient, so it stayed positive right here, okay? But when we multiply it by a negative coefficient, you can see it just kind of turned this upside down, and now it's going down at both ends. So that would be what we'd say there then is as x goes to negative infinity, so as x goes to the left, okay, that would be going to the left, the y is gonna go to negative infinity. And as x goes to positive infinity, which again means going to the right, the y is going to go to negative infinity as well. Okay, and that's again what we're seeing here that as we keep going left, this is still going down. As we keep going right, this is still going down. Okay, so group three, what we have here is we now have an odd exponent. Okay, in this case, you can see it was three, then five, then seven. Um, and we have a positive leading coefficient again. Well, what happens in this situation is the odd exponent means that if we put a big negative number in for x, a big negative number raised to a, an odd exponent stays negative. Okay, so negative 1,000 to the seventh is still gonna be negative. And so we take that negative value and we multiply it by a positive leading coefficient, which here is one, here was three, and here is two. A negative times a positive is going to be a negative. But as we go to the right side here, so again, just as x went to negative infinity, so it's a negative infinity, y also went to negative infinity. But now as x goes to positive infinity, which means as we go to the right, if I take, say, 1,000 instead of a negative 1,000, if I take positive 1,000 and raise it to the seventh, well, that's going to be a big positive number. And I multiply a positive by a positive coefficient, then a positive times a positive is gonna mean the right side is gonna keep going up. Now, the last one here, what we have is we have, again, odd degree, but we have a negative leading coefficient. So again, here, what's gonna happen is if I put in a big negative number for x and I raise it to the seventh, that will stay negative, but then I multiply that by a negative leading coefficient and a negative times a negative means this is gonna be up at the end put in a big positive number, or any positive number, if I put in 5 for x, um, 5 raised to anything is still going to be positive, but then I multiply it by that negative leading coefficient, so it's a positive times a negative, so that will be going down. So here, as x goes to negative infinity, y goes to infinity, and as x goes to infinity, y goes to negative infinity. So again, what you're really thinking about is, in the end, is this a positive times a positive, a negative times a positive, a positive times a negative, or a negative times a negative? And that's really, if you want to put values in, that's what we're looking for. Okay. So in the end, we have this sort of chart. And the chart, again, as you can see, is based off degree being even or odd. And then the sign of the leading coefficient being positive or negative. And this chart here is naturally a good resource for you to consider this end behavior and what these graphs would be doing. Again, they may um, be straight lines if it's just 3x plus 2 or negative 3x plus 2 or whatever. Um, if it's an x squared term, then it's going to bend once in there. If it's an x cubed, it's going to bend twice and so on. So here's just a blank one that you could fill out for yourself if you wanted to. Um, we won't do that right now. And so the end behavior of the following polynomials. So again, when we look at these, well, the first thing we've got to do is figure out where, where is the leading term. Okay, so the leading term on this first one here, you're going to see is this negative 2x to the fifth. So that means we have an odd uh, exponent and a negative leading coefficient. Again, when you do that, that means if I were to just, again, draw this, this picture, uh, an odd exponent means if I put in a big negative, it's going to stay negative. 
but I multiply that by negative two here, and a negative times a negative means that's gonna go up on the left side, okay? Um, on the right side, if I put in 10, 10 to the fifth is gonna be positive still, and so that positive times negative two is gonna lead to a negative. So that just means as x goes to negative infinity, oops, sorry, that's negative infinity, then y will go to infinity. But down here, as x goes to positive infinity, then y will go to negative infinity. Okay, second one here. The leading term is 4x to the fourth here. So again, now we have an even exponent and a positive leading coefficient. Sorry, I can write these as negative and positive again. So even and positive, so that was our original. In this, in this case, everything's going up. Okay, no matter what we put in for x, it's going to end up being positive. Negative 10 to the 4th is positive. 10 to the 4th is positive. And we're multiplying it by a positive 4. So everything's positive there. Uh, the third one here, we've got an odd degree. In this case, that's 7. Okay, so it's odd. And we've got a positive exponent. So that means if we put in a negative number that the for x, negative 10 to the 7th is still negative. Negative times a positive 3, negative times a positive is a negative. Okay? And then if we put in 10 for x, 10 to the 7th is positive. Times 3, that would stay positive. So that would look like this for our end behavior. As x goes to negative infinity, y will go to negative infinity. As x goes to positive infinity, y will go to positive infinity. All right, so one more element of this is now the idea of factored form versus standard form. Um, we will sometimes encounter uh, polynomials that are given to us in a factored form. Um, naturally, we could distribute this 6x and turn it into standard form. We could FOIL here and turn that into standard form. Um, so we know there's a process by which we can kind of take a factored polynomial and say, okay, this maybe looks a little more complicated to try and address. So let's just go ahead and turn this into standard form. Now at the same time, keep in mind, we're only really concerned about the leading term right now. So when it comes to actually foiling or distributing, we're really just worried about what leads these polynomials. Okay, so if we have this situation, what you're gonna see is again, the same end behavior rules that we were talking about previously, but that idea of do we need to foil completely? So when you look at all of these, oops, sorry about that. When you look at these, um, in the end, we really only care about the F in these situations, okay? So we don't actually need to FOIL all the way through. We really just need to get that first term times the first term, or if we're distributing, distributing through to that first term as well. So if we look at this and say, okay, we want to find the leading term and describe the end behavior here. Well, what the leading term here for the first one is x to the eighth. The leading term for the second one is 2x. Okay, so again, if the if these two are swapped, the 2x is still the leading term because it's still really in standard form within each set of parentheses. Because what we're trying to do is figure out what's going to give us the biggest exponent. Okay, and we know that x to the eighth times negative three isn't giving us the biggest exponent. We know that one times two x isn't giving us and one times three isn't giving us. So the big one we're worried about is that, which of course when we FOIL, that is, that, that's first. But you do have to be just on watch in case one of these is out of order um, because then it's not technically first times first until you rearrange to put it in standard form within each parenthesis. So when we do this though, what we're seeing is x to the eighth times two x would be 2x to the ninth. Again, it's adding the exponents. Okay, so it's 1 times 2 out front. And then x to the 8th times x to the first is really x to the 8th plus 1. Okay, so that's 2x to the ninth. Now, what does that mean? That means we have an odd exponent, but a positive leading coefficient. So we, again, look here, we have an odd degree and a positive leading coefficient, which means where those meet, 
that we're going to be negative. And again, that's the, the idea of being negative. We put in negative 10 for x. Negative 10 to the ninth is a negative number. A negative number times 2 is still a negative number. If we put in 10 for x, 10 to the ninth is a positive number. Positive number times 2 is still a positive number. Okay, so this the end behavior here would be down to the left as x goes to infinity. Y would go, excuse me, as x goes to negative infinity, y would go to negative infinity. As x goes to positive infinity, y would go to positive infinity. Okay, so the second one here, again, this one is in the proper order as well, so it's going to be the first term times the first term. So we've got 3x to the third times a negative 5x. Well, 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. x to the third times x to the first, again, is x to the 3 plus 1, so that's x to the fourth. So here we have an even degree, but a negative leading coefficient. So even degree here, negative leading coefficient here. So that one's going to be down, down. Now, again, the rationale for that is if you put in anything for x, whether this is negative 10 or positive 10, when you raise it to the fourth, it's going to be a positive number. And so a positive times a negative here, because this is negative 15, positive times a negative will always lead to a negative. So no matter where we go, to the right or to the left here, we're always going to end up going down at, as our end behavior on both sides. Um, what if there are more than two factors? Well, again, now we just continue this process uh, that we were working through, but, but then multiply the next leading term in as well. So you can see the leading term of this first one is x. The leading term of the second one is 2x. The leading term of the third one is x. So they're all in the right order. We didn't, we didn't need to switch. Again, what I mean by right order is if this third one is written as 7 plus x, then technically we'd be multiplying by the second term, or we'd just rewrite this as x plus 7 like it is here. So x times 2x times x is going to give us our leading term here because this is going to lead to the biggest exponent because those have the most x's. So again, the numbers out front are really 1 times 2 times 1. So that's 2. And then x times x times x. Well, again, that's x to the first times x to the first times x to the first, which is x to the 1 plus 1 plus 1 or x to the third. So you can see same process. We've got an odd uh, degree here. We've got a positive leading coefficient. So again, odd and positive is that bottom left one again. Um, because if we put in negative 10, the odd um, exponent is going to keep it negative, and we're going to multiply it by a positive. So a negative times a positive will be there. Put in 10, 10 to the third is going to be a positive. Multiply it by a positive. Um, so again, don't forget this notation as well as x goes to negative infinity, which just means as we go to the left, okay, then y is going to keep going down. As we go to the right, which would be as x goes to infinity, then y is going to keep going up. Uh, next one here, again, this, these, all these terms are in the proper order. We've got the biggest x there, biggest x there, biggest x there, so... 2x cubed times 3x is 6x to the fourth, again, because it's 3 plus 1 for the exponents. And then we're going to multiply that by a negative x when we bring this one down. And so that gives us a negative 6x to the fifth. So negative 6x to the fifth, so now we have an odd exponent and a negative leading term. So odd exponent and negative leading term means it's going to look like this which again just flipped over the one from the bottom left because we're multiplying by a negative leading term instead of a positive leading term. Okay, so when we do that, if we put in a negative number for x here, negative 10 to the fifth is a negative, but negative times a negative is a positive. So that's why we go up as we go to the left. Okay, so as x goes to negative infinity, y will go to positive infinity. And we're going to go down to the right, because if I put in 10 for x, 10 to the 5th is a positive, but times negative 6 makes it a negative. So as x goes to infinity, y goes to negative infinity. Okay? A uh, couple last ones here. If it gets a little more complicated like this, um, where we have all of a sudden cubed and squared terms, and I'll just I'll, I'll look at a little bit of each of these. What you're really doing here is this is really x minus 1, 
times x minus 1 times x minus 1. Okay, that's what x minus 1 cubed is. All right, and then we have x to the 4th minus 3, x to the 4th minus 3, which is this x to the 4th minus 3 squared. And then we'd have the x plus 7 and the x minus 4. And again, x times x times x is x cubed. So now we've already taken care of those. x cubed times x to the 4th is now x to the 7th. Okay, so now we bring this one down. x to the 7th times x to the 4th is x to the 11th. Okay, so that's done there. x to the 11th times x is now x to the 12th. And then x to the 12th times x is now x to the 13th. So we have an odd exponent and just a positive one out front. So you can see it's just piling up those exponents there. Now this last one here, um, we've got to be a little more careful on because of that negative out front. So we technically have, uh, we have the 2x squared times 2x squared, which would be the these twice, times 3x squared, and that's only once, and then times an x fourth, x to the fourth. But again, those all have a negative up front. So we technically are going to take all of those and then multiply by negative 1 at the very end. So we've got 2 times 2 times 3 is 12. x squared times x squared is x to the fourth, times another x squared is x to the sixth, times x to the fourth would be x to the tenth, and then we still have that negative up front, so it's really negative 12x to the tenth. Uh, so now we've got our positive, or excuse me, our even exponent and our negative leading term. So in the end, what we really are worrying about here is we have these polynomials where they are, are written out in standard form or a polynomial that's written out in factored form. Either way, what we're really interested in here is that leading term. Obviously, in standard form, it's already given to us, and that saves us some time. If it's in factored form, we do have to do a little work to try and get that, that initial uh, leading term uh, if it were all in standard form. And, and, and in the end, we're taking these even or odd exponents and these positive or negative leading coefficients to determine that end behavior. But same process in the end. It's just a little different path to get there. Thank you, as always, for listening. If you have questions, please ask.